Hello, this is my uh, review of Chateau Obsidian, issue number one. And let's say it's written by Ross Bamfield, as you can see there. Sorry about the little bit of glare there. I'm, I'm really trying to work on that. Um, also, I have a little trouble with the autofocus on this, I just discovered. But all the elements you need for the story are here in the cover. It's a good cover. So we, we get to meet all these characters. We don't get her name, but we get names for almost everybody else. And these two dudes, we don't get their name either. Um, let's see. And there is a variant cover, which also, you know, different focus here. So instead of the group up at the front, instead we just have her. And she is there, again, with all the elements, all the different people. So these are pretty well thought out covers. These are like little movie posters. I think they're well done. But this was intended to be a graphic novel. The ending is really just a twist that prepares you to want issue two, and it worked. I think I thought it was well put together, and so issue one here, it still looks like it was in. You can still tell it was kind of intended as a graphic novel, but the whole book then functions to give you scenes that add up to what's gonna the the different things that are gonna play together that become parts of the story. His opening page is an ad that's in world, so this is a, a vintage wine from. Uh, 2650. The ship in question uh, has a vineyard on it, and Chateau Obsidian is a reference to one of the vi vineyards on that ship. Uh, he starts his this book with an overture to the entire story itself, which is kind of neat. I, I think it's an okay w uh, way to write. We have a framing device here of people meeting in a diner, and them talking, and this guy will be the narrator, and they are talking over, um, you know, whatever, and this guy says, hey, have you ever heard about this thing? Now, this this bigger story, the six or whatever issues it's going to be, it takes place in two time frames several hundred years apart. I think like 700. But uh, this is later in the story, and he is saying, have you heard about thus and so? The ship is called the Mayflower. And he's referring to the Mayflower and saying he knows of a woman who is on the Mayflower, and she is going to be fighting a battle this was all made necessary because of things that happened in, in, you know, prior, and her fate was decided hundreds of years earlier. A young man had a dream of leaving the ship, and he gives a little overview of hundreds of years earlier. Now, so now these two characters are from the earlier time frame. It basically says leaving the ship and taking care of the woman he loves, blah, blah, blah. Um, but because of nefarious things that went wrong, uh, which I'll show you, uh, th those nefarious things took over a robot and human alike, and look at this. Um, so investigating her, the woman he loves, investigating her disappearance, the young man uncovered from beneath the Mayflower's shining uh, pre pretense of order a mon monstrous chaos lying in wait and terror beyond his imagination. And then it says down here, so he followed. He went with the terror. Whatever this is. So then it, it, the overture ends with saying that he traveled through thought itself to try and find the woman he loved. Very romantic. Okay, fine. And then it says, let's start at the beginning. So these two guys are tourists. Uh, they're taking a ferry over to the Mayflower while it's still in our solar system, as opposed to God knows where else. They're tourists who are winos. I mean, they're really into wine. So, um, And then scene change, and we're, we're shown that behind the scenes there are, uh, you know, sort of, well, how do I say it, corporate dark things going on, including some kind of experimentation. Uh, this, this guy's the boss. Oh, sorry. This guy's the boss. Uh, and here is somebody who came out of the experiment and is n obviously not doing well. Now, one thing I'll say about the art in this, I'm fine with it, for, especially for a sci-fi and tech side of things. It, it works really well. Uh, he has his own distinctive style for making faces, and so with a mild exception, a couple of his males do resemble each other just slightly, but for the most part, everybody is, is themselves throughout the book. But we see that... that uh, on the Mayflower, these are, there are these experiments going on. It looks pretty dark. So there's a scene change again. And now in this scene, we're being introduced to the um, the heroine. So Sarah is her name. And she's a cop. And this is the scene is to introduce her for what she normally does in terms of catching a criminal. Uh, now this criminal is named Gerald Edward Blake. So we're given a name, and, and she controls these little drones. We're given a name, but I don't know if that's the same Edward as Edwin, who shows up later. It may not be. So, uh, that's not made clear. That'll come out in issue two or three or four or wherever. Um, so she's got a date tonight, etc. And with that date, she's going to you know, go off and have her date, and we change scenes again. Now, at this point, it, it feels a little bit like we're just being given a lot of information, uh, sort of world-building all over. So we have uh, the overture, we have 
uh, we're told what the Mayflower is. There's a lot of world building there. There's something nefarious going on, cor uh, like a corporation on the Mayflower, and now we're being given a character. So, you know, where's really the story? Well, now we're being given another character, but these tie together. So we're so we see this these two winos whom we already know, and there's this little yellow guy in the background. And as we proceed, his job oh, I probably wasn't showing you. Uh, his job is just to be the mascot that then pe tourists get their picture taken with. This is his camera named Iris. That's that's funny. Uh, and he's doing his job. And then we move into the narration being his thoughts rather than a, a disembodied third-party narrator. Uh, he describes his day. I, the layout here actually works really well. You can read it around either direction, but just go from one corner to the other corner and you're good. Uh, and he's having a very busy day, etc. We get to know him actually really well. So I like how Ross Bamfield, the author, has put together uh, showing us character rather than just telling us who people are, even though a lot of this is world building. So that's a good mark there. We're back to some of the nefarious stuff going on. They want to cover up whatever's going on with the experiments, and so they delete some data. Our two main characters go through their date and whatnot, and he finds out that his data from the photographs he was taking, that's his, the way he makes his money, is selling photographs to tourists, um, you know, bad, photographs of their own memories, you know, like any amusement park. And his data's gone. It's, it's just deleted. Sort of the last straw, his breaking point for wanting to get out, get out, uh, get off the Mayflower, etc. And then we jump, you know, what was it, 700 years? So just as centuries later, the Mayflower has changed. Notice the color in the center is different. And it is now overtaken by pirates, uh, captained by Cap uh, Captain, I think pirates, but Cap uh, Captain Featherstone is, is here. We're in an entirely new time frame. And we're introduced to some new characters. We're seeing this character, whom we were introduced to way back in the overture. The Mayflower changes course while, it's, while her captain is away on another sh on, a, on a colony right over there so he has to hop back and then you know find his way through to get back control back of his ship and that's where we leave off so something's going on between these two they're connected i'm just going to tell you that let's see yeah i liked a lot of the show don't tell that ross does in his writings it was pretty good that way i think for sci-fi his his art style really fits here his flow makes sense if you know at first you're just getting into something and then you change scenes but by the end of it when you think back over it it's not a big deal oh one thing i noticed was the font in this book is a little bit small it may have been originally formatted for uh, a european book that's that's a bit bigger because uh, ross is in uh, or is it ross yeah ross is in the uk so there's your overview of the book i do i did enjoy it i'm looking forward to number two and uh, you're not missing out in terms of not being able to get this. You will be able to get this first volume with number two. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that covers it. So, hey, thanks for checking this out.